All righty, gang. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome gang. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. See that that works a little bit better for the show. Yeah, much, much better. Which one are we? Which one do you look at? We're looking at all four. We're live across all social media every day, folks, when we do this show. We go live on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at the exact same time every single day. I know you couldn't imagine me ever figuring out how to do that, right, baby? I'm impressed. I really You am. would never, ever. Whoops. Oh. Hello. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about, gang. First, 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 first. We are running a new contest. Michael Folks and I got together. Michael owns a company called Inside Sport Fishing. Some of you that have watched his show are going to understand what I'm saying. Oh my God. Those of you that haven't seen his show, you're missing out. Go over to YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or Facebook and just type in Inside Sport Fishing Gang. If you like to fish or if you just like to go outside and have fun, Michael's got stuff for everybody over on his channel. It is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty insane. Cool. And I was blessed for an opportunity to do another seminar with Michael over at his house. Mm -hmm. We just finished it up. It's available to watch at our YouTube channel, Your Saltwater Guy. And there's a couple other interviews with myself plus lots of legends in the industry over on Michael's page. So you want to check that all out and then what Michael and I are doing is everybody that goes to Your Saltwater Guide right now and checks out the interview I did with Michael Folks, which is spectacular, by the way, very touching. You'll you may shed a tear. It gets it's pretty emotional for Dave. Thanks, baby. It's a real real cool interview, though. So check it out if you haven't already. Michael's been in the industry for a very very long time. He knows all the secrets of the Hanson family. He knows the <laughs> right questions to ask, and uh, yeah, we got pretty emotional, but. Here's what we're doing. Michael Folks and myself are putting together a prize package for you guys. We're going to give this prize package away on April 30th. To everyone that goes to your saltwater guide, subscribes to the channel. If you already subscribed, you don't have to subscribe, but subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. Yeah, leave a comment. <laughs> leave a comment. Michael and I are going to read them. Michael's putting together a sweat bag of swag, and I'm putting together a bag of swag, both from our stores. If you go to Inside Sport Fishing and look at his cool store he just put up over there, you're going to get cool swag from Michael. Plus, if you go and look at his store, Inside Sport Fishing, the store, you're going to see all the cool swag he has. I the bitchin' shirts mm -hmm. and the hats and sweatshirts and all the other cool stuff he has over there. Go to look at Inside Sport Fishing, the store, and then leave a comment on the interview Michael did with me on my Your Saltwater Guide on YouTube. And subscribe. It's very simple. And also hit that little bell, the notification bell. So anytime a new video that Dave puts out comes out, then you'll be notified. Right. And might might help you out even more is if you subscribe to Michael's channel also. That would be I did because <laughs> Michael's gonna look and uh, him and I are gonna come up with the winner. It's gonna be a so if you go over to his channel also, inside sport fishing. You're going to be blown away with all the cool, cool, cool videos he has over there. And it's going to be worth it. I promise you. I won't steer you the wrong way. My favorite is Tribute to Tuna. No, is that? Yeah, on that's that. on there. That, I saw that long time ago. It's really cool. Yeah, it Very never gets old, huh? It it's never a, gets it's old. old. It's a lot of old footage, but it's super cool. Just super cool. Yeah, it never gets old to watch that. It's pretty spectacular over there, so. That's what we're doing. We're going to give away the prize package on April 30th. Check out the interview. You, at least you'll get to know more about why I'm such a jerk. <laughs> yeah, you think so? <laughs> no, you'll get, to know, sure you'll get to know more about who I am. It's a, it's a very good interview to go along with the other interviews Michael has over there with him and I. Because it's very touching, you know, what just happened here in January and all that yeah. stuff came to a head. and We had to sit down with Michael and do it. Interview tribute to my pops. Plus, you look super hot in the video. I, I think so. Wow. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm so hot. Yeah. Yeah. For well, a I mean old in man. the video, not right oh, now. Oh, not right now. <laughs> I'm just kidting. For a bad old man. <laughs> Stop. All right, gang. So check that out. That's that contest. All right. We got that. And we give away so much stuff on our show. 
Kelly and I, we give away so much stuff. We're happy that Michael's involved with us now. And then we have that other contest going on with Promar. Gang, I just sent out a, I just sent out an email to all of you that I have your email address talking about the cedar plug. There's never a time where I don't have this cedar plug. Here, hold that. I don't have this cedar plug in my spread behind the boat. I like the natural cedar plug, but man, the daisy chain cedar plug that Promar's come up with, natural color, daisy chain. Oh my gosh. If the single one gets bit so good, you know this daisy chain's going to get bit. If you're going to go trolling this summer, you there's never a time where we're down here in Cabo or we're up in Southern California or wherever we're fishing, we don't have a daisy chain or excuse me, a cedar plug natural color back behind the boat in the spread there's always a cedar plug for fishing marlin and for fishing tuna for fishing wahoo for fishing yellowtail there's always a cedar plug back there behind the boat in the spread you gotta get one so look at you go to promar you can link right on it you can link right on that email right to promar if you didn't get the email then i don't know why you're not a part of our our email group because we have thousands and thousands of people and we send all this cool stuff out to you. So if you're not, send us an email, your saltwaterguide.com. That'll get you into our email blast. We try to send one out every week. Or you could put your email address if you want to have it out there on, you know, Facebook or you know, Instagram, send, send a TikTok, or wherever. Everywhere. But your saltwaterguide at yahoo.com is the safest yeah. way. Yes. And then Kelly sells them. I mean, no, well, she doesn't. Yeah, no, she's some third party. Yeah, yeah. some third party <laughs> some research third company. Party. Kelly's selling them. That's how she's supplementing her. A income. market right now. No, no. So, <laughs> <Just laughs> so okay, go over to Promar and order that product. And we're going to give away a gift package from Promar this month. Also, it's going to be a big grab bag of all kinds of cool stuff from Promar simply by ordering some stuff that gets you entered into the contest. All right. So today is uh, that cedar plug. We That was for yesterday. I was flying back down here, so we didn't have the show. So the cedar plug, Promar, we're right there with you. And then there's so many other Promar products. Just go look at the website, promar.com, and you'll see all the cool stuff at their store. They're just cool. I like those guys. They're very cool. Ben and, and Steve, Steve and yeah. Joaquin and the rest of the group at Promar, very, very helpful, very knowledgeable, and very easy to work with. You guys will all have a ball when you go over there. But today is Okuma. Here, hold that. This is Okuma Wednesday. We always talk about an Okuma product on Wednesdays, and I was lucky enough to go up to Southern California and get this reel. This reel is insane, gang. Those of you that are old-time fishermen, you're going to remember this reel. This is like the Squitter Jr., this is the same size as the Squitter Jr. This thing fits perfectly in your hand. What is it? It's an Akuma TSR 5NS. TSR stands for Tesoro Star Drag. Gang, okay, I'm old school. I know Akuma makes a ton of two-speed reels with the lever drag. They do, and they cover everything, and they're great reels, and I love them. But, man, when I get this, when I get this Star Drag reel in my hand, when I get this thing in my hand and it's so small and it fits so perfect, when I get this, hold that baby, when I get this thing in my hand, gang, it just feels, it brings me all the way back to when I was a kid fishing with the Squitter Jr. This thing, this Tesoro 5NS Star Drag is the, is it. It's the, they, they touched on what I need. I fish calico bass, white sea bass, yellowtail. Small tuna, I'm not too much into that big giant tuna. We used to catch it all the time, but we're not too much into that when I fish for me. This is this is the workhorse. This thing is a star drag, which is absolutely incredible. A star drag. Just go to Akuma and type in TSR 5NS, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Check out this reel. It is unbelievable how spectacular this thing is and how light it is. It is a tenth of the weight of the old squitters. This thing is so cool. The Akuma 5NS Tesoro Star Drag is absolutely the most spectacular reel I've gotten to fish with in a long, long time. I just fished with it for a couple days. Doesn't that feel good in your hand, baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It I feels like it. bitching, huh? I like it. The thing is so cool. You're going to love it, gang. Why do we use these narrow reels? We're not using these big, wide reels like we grew up fishing when we were kids because of the fact that we have braided line now. Mm -hmm. So you don't need that big, giant spool of line lugging it around. Everything weighs. 
everything's that big spool, that big reel with the big spool, fishing yellowtail or bass or barracuda or white sea bass, man, that's a lot of weight. With the braided line on it, it's even more weight. And all this stuff causes fatigue when you're fishing. And I like to fish from when it, when I get on the boat to when I get off the boat. <laughs> yes, you do. So this reel is my friend. This is my buddy. This is the reel. This reel is insane. You guys have to check it out. Just go to Akuma, type in Akuma and type in S. 5NS, and you're going to see what we're talking about. That's the real. Look at that thing. That thing is cool. spectacular. You're going to love this thing. Fill it up with some braid. I got it filled with 40-pound braid, and I love it. All right? Okay. So, gang, today we're going to talk about something that needs to be talked about. We haven't talked about this for a long time. We're going to talk about sport boats and sport boat etiquette and how you should act when you go on a sport boat. And, and some of the things – now, I've been blessed – over my career fishing for a living yeah. in Southern California. I got to run sport boats with my family and then with Don Brockman yeah. and uh, got another guy named Jack Kimnitz and stuff. I ran different sport boats up and down the California coast for a long, long time. And then I went into the yacht industry about 20 years ago. But I got all asked, I've seen all the different things. And back when I ran sport boats, the local fishing was absolutely insane. Not that it can't be again, but we're not, they're making it so you can't keep anything. <laughs> they're making it really tough on us and they're after our sheephead right now i was just up talking to my sister and she was on a big meeting about the sheephead it's absolutely unbelievable and everybody's willing to give them oh they're gonna have the sheephead i don't know gang stop giving them stuff no they don't deserve anything we don't have hardly anything left to fish for the the whole thing is they want to make it so we don't have anything to fish for that's the game that's what they're headed for so quick giving them stuff easy Pick and fight every aspect of it you can as far as our ability to fish in Southern California. But today we're talking about sport boats and etiquette on the sport boats and how important it is. Gang, a lot of times you go out on a sport boat and there's a lot of tourists. And we need the tourists. We need them on the sport boats. I know you guys get upset when you see the tourists on the sport boat. You're like, oh, my God, they're going to be tangled up with me all day. Well, if it wasn't for them, most sport boats wouldn't even run. Because the handful of good fishermen are not going to support the, the livelihood of these captains and the boat owners. We need all this, especially in the local half day and three quarter day and, and uh, overnight boats. Yeah, the long range boats, they got their own clientele. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the people that make the industry click along in Southern California. So we're going to talk about a few things I think are super important about these people that come out on the sport boat, okay? Okay. Okay, so look, the tourists have to be there or the industry doesn't work. So it's gonna be imperative for all of us that go and that we know all you superstar fishermen, <laughs> you should understand that that tourist and that child and that mom and that dad, they're the most important thing in the industry because if we don't have them, we don't have an industry. All right. We don't have our half day and three quarter day boats that you guys all like to jump on. So lose the attitude towards the people that don't know what they're doing, because if you are the fisherman you say you are, then you should be right there to help them out the whole time you're out there. That's your job as a fisherman. You should be on that boat looking for the tourists and looking for the children and saying, I'm going to make sure they have the best day they can possibly have on the boat. You want them to enjoy the sport the way you enjoy it. You want them to think the next time they have some free time, they want to go on that boat and go fishing. You don't want to be that guy that's pissed off that they're fishing next to them on the boat. How that, you know why you're that guy, why you're pissed off or you're that gal or you're that human that's pissed off because that tourist, because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Let's be perfectly honest. From right now forward, you should never be in a tangle again. If you're in a tangle and you're supposed to be the fisherman that you know what you're doing, you caused the tangle. <laughs> you did because you couldn't get out of your own damn way. That's true. <laughs> you caused the tangle. If you see your line drifting over to someone who doesn't know what they're doing, then you need to move and go follow your goddamn line. Sorry. Follow your line and get over to where it is so that you're not the cause of this tangle. The tourist. Or the child 
cannot be the cause of the tangle. They have no idea what they're doing. They're just there, and they're just trying to have the best time of their life. It's up to you to make sure that they have the best time they can possibly have when they're on the boat. Like I say in all my seminars, if I'm ever running a sport boat, and I see you standing there winding up a 10-inch sculpin mm -hmm. and a child standing there staring uh -oh. at you, uh -oh. I'm throwing the bait scoop at you. I'm, I'm making sure you don't get to eat anymore on the boat. I'm cutting you off from food and water. Because you're ruining the industry for the rest of us. We need all these people to enjoy themselves when they come out of the boat. Those of you that are expert fishermen, here's the deal. From now on, when you get on a party boat, when you get on an open party boat or out there in Florida, you guys I'm talking to on TikTok, you go out on a head boat. We call them sport boats here on the West Coast. You call them head boats on the East Coast. Same God, same principle, same thing. Listen. From this point forward, if you care about the industry and if you think you're all that in a bag of chips, then start helping those people. When you hook a fish, let them wind it in. Like I say in the interview with Michael, I love to fish. It's my very most favorite thing to do except hang out with you. Right, yes. Those are the two things I love to do more <laughs> than funny. anything, okay? So Pretty good, yeah, huh? But listen, oh, no, stop it. Oh, my God. Poor <laughs> Kelly. She's got it so tough. But listen, gang, nothing's better than the bite. That's all I fish for is the bite. There's only two good times when you're fishing, the bite and when you land it. The middle part sucks. <laughs> let the children enjoy that or let the tourists enjoy that, man, woman, child. Let them enjoy that. Hook a fish and hand them the pole. You're going to get so much more out of it. It's going to make you feel so much better. And if you care about the owner of the boat and you care about his family and you care about the deckhands, then you're doing, you're doing them a massive favor. You are doing them so much good, better than giving them a $10 tip. If you taught those tourists that this is not a hostile place, if you don't call your, your operation thug sport fishing, if you're actually involved in teaching people how to do this, then you're, we're all going to win. You're going to win. You're going to feel better. The guy that owns the boat is going to win. Now, there's a lot of captains that don't own the boat and don't understand the industry, and they're still doing the same thing they were doing when they were 20. Now they're 50, and they're still doing the same thing, eating their boogers and being <laughs> assholes to the clients. They, oh what, they don't get it, and they're never going to get it, and they're gonna, that's, their, that's their life. But the guys that own the boats, they understand exactly what I'm saying. And the guys that work on the boats that aren't eating their boogers all day, they understand what I'm saying. <laughs> It's about these tourists, gang. It's always going to be. It always has been. And when I was running sport boats, I made it super important that my crew and all my regulars that fish with me all the time understood how important it was to make sure that those people with the rental rods have the best time of their life. Because you're already going to go again next week. You're going on the boat again the next time you take a day off. You're going. But it's so enriching to hand that pole to someone with a fish on it and let them catch it. Dang, that's how it works. That's how this whole thing goes. That's why I've been doing what I do for so long, showing you exactly what we do to fish, showing you all the things that everyone kept so tight and secret to themselves. I've been blasted for years by the booger eaters in the industry, the guys that don't understand that just don't understand. They're always going to be just a, a, a guy. They're never going to be the guy because they don't get it. They don't understand where the money comes. They don't understand that the tourists are the number one thing on these boats. They, they're never going to understand that. And they're always going to be doing what they do. And that's okay. And they're the ones that are spreading negative about guys like myself that are out there sharing all the time. It's pretty funny. The same five or six oh booger God. eaters are yeah. always, always, always ready to attack Captain Dave. Yeah. But yet, it's okay. You just you they just... wish they were Captain Dave hanging out with Kelly. <laughs> okay, but gang, that's the key. That's the most important thing on a party boat, a head boat. You gotta understand what makes the whole thing happen, and you gotta if you care about the owner and the operator, then you'll this will all make sense to you. If you're leaving crappy comments, then we know you're the problem. We already know that. It's, it's okay. Yeah. But when you get on that party boat, head boat, make sure that you take care of those people. And from today forward, 
If you're ever in a tangle, remember you caused it. You caused it. <laughs> yeah, they, the terrorists didn't cause it. You caused it because your ability to follow your own damn line. You can always tell the guy that has all the bitching rods and reels, but he doesn't know how to follow his line. <laughs> we, you, you revealed the second your bait hits the water. We already know you suck. We already know you suck because you can't follow your goddamn line. The, the easiest thing to do in this industry, is, and you hear the captain and you hear the deckhands saying this over and over and over again, follow your line, follow your line, slide to the left, slide <laughs> to the left, follow your line. Do you think we just have a phenomenal amount of extra words that we didn't share at home <laughs> that, 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 that night? We're coming out on the boat, sharing them with you. No, it's because you got to follow your goddamn line. God, that's the thing that pisses us captains off the most is you're fishing on the bow. You got your finger buried in your nose trying to pick that big bugger and your line's all the way down in the back of the boat going around the guy in the corner. You're on the bow. And then you're like, oh, they tangled up my line again. Nope, you tangled it up because you are a booger eater and you cannot follow your own damn line. Gang, from this point forward, when you get on the boat and you drop your line in the water, if it's not dead set right in front of you, then you have to figure out how to do it so that it's in front of you. If there's a lot of current, then you have to cast it up the side of the boat so it ends up coming down in front of you. There's so many things that'll make you stand above the rest, and knowledge is key. And you can't say, I don't know what I'm doing because I ran sport boats for a very long time, and I have a very, very good idea what the hell I'm talking about. So tangles... Tangles, tangles are the number one thing that needs to be avoided when you go on the boat. Because if you're in a tangle, then you you suck. You don't know what to do. You're not you're not you're not helping the boat. You're not helping the people. You're not helping the tourists. Right. You're not helping the captain. Right. You're not helping his wife or his children. Right, you're right. It's so true. You're 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 the problem, and then you're making everybody, and then you're copping attitude. <laughs> oh my god. Because you don't know how to fish, so you're copping an attitude. Oh, I go on the boat every week, every Wednesday I go. Okay, <laughs> but you still suck because you don't take, you don't listen. You hear the captain tell you all day, slide around with your line, slide around with your line, get out under, over, over, under. If you do what you were doing, nobody would have to say that to you. you. You never pull the fish to you. You always follow the fish. Follow your fish. Follow your fish. Don't pull them to you because then you're going to pull everybody else's line across to everybody else. That's no, because then you, <laughs> you're the problem. Yep. Gang, I could go on and on and on about yes. this for the rest of my life because mm -hmm. I kind of have a half a clue what yeah. I'm talking about. And it really upsets me when I go out on a sport boat and see all these so-called experts giving the tourist shit. It pisses me off more than anything because if you knew what you were doing, you would take care of those yep. people. So that's our show for today. Don't forget, go over to the YouTube Watch that video, the interview with Captain Dave Hansen, or don't watch it. Just go over there, leave a comment, say you watched it. Dave Hansen sucks and his wife's <laughs> horrible human. Go say that. No, Whatever. don't do that because I'll cry. <laughs> Kelly can't cry. handle all the hate. She reads all the hate from all you bugger oh eaters. Oh, my gosh. And she wants to get in there and mix it up with you. All I say is thank you very much for the views. Keep viewing. Keep sharing it. Tell all your friends what a booger eater I am. It makes my day. I love it. I love being your booger eater. I always want to be your bugger eater. Okay? So remember that. <laughs> Thank you all for watching us today. Great show, Kelly. Thanks for being oh, with you're us. Welcome. Thanks. I, uh, it's always <laughs> great when my wife's on the show with me. Always a good time. You are very welcome. All right, everybody. Thank you all for joining Bye. us. We'll be with you tomorrow for another great show. Tomorrow we'll be talking about some Opsin floral carbon products. There's a little bit of spool of Opsin right there behind Kelly. <laughs> we'll be talking that. about Opsin. We'll be talking about everything. Love you. Hang in there. Be kind to each other. I'll see you tomorrow. Here, close up. No. Don't do stuff like that. What are you doing? My nose kept running. I kept like trying to. Dab it. I mean, I, baby, you can't do this anymore. You can't tape stuff upon this. So ghetto.